few men were able to escape the wrath of Darth Vader. This was especially true during the height of his power within the Empire. Even Governor Tarkin, to a degree, had his respect for Darth Vader's methods. However, this man not only humiliated Darth Vader, but actively looked to downgrade his status in the eyes of the Emperor. Vader wished nothing more than to choke this person to death with the Force. This man was Cassio Tage. He was born to a noble and wealthy family. After a year of the formation of the Empire, Tage joined within the ranks and he quickly became an officer. Five years into the reign of Emperor Palpatine, Tage served as general and headed the Imperial Army as the chief of the Imperial Army. To supplement that, he was also a member of the Joint Chiefs. He was then seen shortly before the Battle of Yavin, where Cassio Tage was stationed aboard the Death Star during that time and he was in charge of army operations as chief of the Imperial Army. During a meeting of the high-ranking Imperials, it was then that Cassio Tage witnessed the fury of Darth Vader, since Admiral Mori started to question Darth Vader's devotion to an ancient religion in the Force and berating him for not being able to find the stolen plans of the Death Star, now located at the hands of the Rebellion. Visibly uncomfortable, he watched as Darth Vader started force-choking Admiral Mori with the Force until Governor Tarkin ordered Vader to release him. It was after Vader's display of power that Cassio Tage glanced to the chair two down from his, which had previously belonged to Director Orson Krennic. His eyes met with the eyes of Admiral Mori. They both knew what Tarkin and Vader did to that poor man. But Tage didn't give up at that moment. He knew that one day he would become the supreme commander over everyone, including Darth Vader. Now, with the destruction of the Death Star and Tarkin's death, General Cassio Tage was praised by Emperor Palpatine for having the foresight to recognize the rebel threat beforehand and the weakness of the Death Star. As a reward for his intelligence and cunning, Cassio Tage was now elevated to the rank of a Grand General and promoted to Supreme Commander of the Imperial Armed Forces, which would now be governed by his philosophy, as in the meantime, a second Death Star would be constructed. Tage reaped the rewards and Darth Vader suffered the consequences of the Death Star's destruction. As a punishment, Palpatine placed Darth Vader under the command of Cassio Tage, and this came much to the delight of the Supreme Commander. Vader now met with his Supreme Commander. Immediately in their first meeting, Cassio Tage expressed his disappointment to the amount of resources that were wasted in the construction of the Death Star. He referred to the whole debacle as Tarkin's folly and wondered how many more Super Star Destroyers they could have built instead of wasting time, money, and resources on one single space station. Vader immediately confronted Tage by claiming that Tarkin at least had vision, while General Tage was much more concerned with analytics, with graphs and statistics. However, it was this mindset that elevated Cassio Tage to now have the command of the military. He immediately reminded Darth Vader who was in charge. After lecturing Darth Vader on the power that the Imperial fleet had to crush any form of resistance, he then started to ensue orders upon Vader. The first mission would be a pirate ship that Vader had to invade, together with Lieutenant Unai, who was to be Vader's companion, although at the end, he was there to personally report back everything Vader did to Cassio Tage. Basically, Tage sent Darth Vader with a spy alongside him. It didn't take long for Vader to successfully raid the pirate space station and also disposing of Unai, who reported to Cassio Tage that supposedly Unai had been a double agent of these pirates, which in fact was not completely true. Vader informed Tage that their next target should be the Crimora Syndicate. In addition to his efforts to root out these pirates, Cassio Tage wanted to oversee the Imperial expansion in the outer rim. For that purpose alone, he decided that criminal elements which had been left unchecked in the previous years would no longer be allowed to act with impunity, and this meant cracking down on the huts. A direct insult to Darth Vader, who up until this point had been flexible with the criminal underworld and with the huts, as long as they keep in check. Then, Cassio Tage went on to concentrate on crushing the plasma devils, but as much as he tried raid after raid, and mission after
after mission, Darth Vader would complete every mission with success, every time. The apex came when Cassio Tage was assigned to deliver missions to several new agents that were now selected by Emperor Palpatine. These agents were cyborgs created by the scientist Silo. This remaining task force was placed under the command of the Astarte twins. General Carbon was sent to capture Luke Skywalker and Tulan Voidgazer was assigned to overlook some research problems. And now Palpatine, Tage, and Silo had banded together to punish Vader even further. Vader was now sidelined completely. He was instructed to track down the people behind the theft of the Suntul Pride's fortune and punish them. What nobody knew is that Darth Vader secretly, in accordance with Dr. Aphra, had stolen that fortune for himself. Since for a moment there, Vader saw no future in the Empire, his ambitions went beyond the Empire and he would need this fortune in order to achieve his ultimate dreams of power. On the other hand, Cassio Tage desperately wanted this fortune. He wanted to recover the credits in order to fund the construction of a new Super Star Destroyer for his own interests. The command of Cassio Tage became mind-numbing for Darth Vader. With each passing day, each passing week, he was being grilled by Cassio Tage, humiliated, downgraded, and talked to like a servant, something that Vader was not accustomed to in the slightest. What infuriated Vader even more is that he knew, deep down, with a flick of his wrist, he could snap the neck of this ordinary human. But alas, he couldn't. The orders from the Emperor were final, but in the end, Vader had a different plan. With patience, he would achieve his goals. During that time, the mining world of Shutorun descended into civil war due to the Ord Duke's refusal to honor the Empire's taxing demands. Emperor Palpatine ordered a full military intervention to defend the Imperial-backed government led by Queen Trios. To Vader's surprise, it was Cassio Tage who gave Darth Vader command of the military force and was sent down to Shutora to handle this immediate situation. Silo and his surviving cyborgs were sent to accompany Darth Vader as advisors and support during the campaign. The sad truth was that Silo and his minions planned to separate from the Empire, create their own separatist movement, and in the end, and it was Tage's mistrust in Darth Vader and his full support for Silo and his cyborgs that would prove to be the end of Cassio Tage's command. Thanks to Tage, it was Voidgazer who was able to help Silo take control of the Executor and subdue the Grand General and the rest of the bridge crew with a nerve gas. Lastly, everything was left in the hands of Darth Vader to clean up the mess that Cassio Tage had created. After Vader killed all of Silo cyborgs and all the remaining clones of Silo, Cassio Tage was left with the blame for this attempted coup. In a very short time, Emperor Palpatine came to visit. For his failures and lack of judgment, Cassio Tage was now demoted by the Emperor and placed under Darth Vader's command. Sidious could sense it. His apprentice wanted revenge more than anything. By placing Tage under Vader's command, he knew that this was the moment we last see of Tage. Tage was now left disgraced, but still proudful. He went on to insist that despite all of these disasters that had happened under his command, everything had come out to the Empire's advantage. Silo had been dispatched, and Shutorun was now silenced. Sensing what was about to come next, Tage continued to prove that he still was to be useful, but Darth Vader, without even saying a word, he simply raised his hand, started force choking Cassio Tage and strangled him to death. His wish had finally come true. After all this time of humiliation under the command of Cassio Tage, the general was no more. He had paid the ultimate price. Admiral Ozil was there to witness everything. None could escape Vader's fury. None could escape Vader's wrath. And Cassio Tage learned that lesson the hard way. So lastly, I leave everything to you guys. What do you guys think about all of this, about Cassio Tage and Vader and their messy relationship? Talk to me down in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you enjoyed, leave a thumbs up down below. Subscribe for dailies. Now you can have an awesome day, Star Wars fans. I'll see you in the next video, and may the Force be with you. Until then.